Hello, welcome, welcome to Galata Studios. Glad you could make it. I'm going to be working on this small panel here. It's a little one because I'm actually testing out this panel. Um, this panel is uh, a new kind of linen oil primed panel, which means that there was linen canvas. I'm going to be using old Holland paint once again. They are my favorite paint. They probably always will be. And I'm going to be using a uh, Old Holland light, yellow light. Uh, it's not really very yellowish. It's more like an off bone white. But that's actually perfect for what I want to use it for here. I had an idea about this piece uh, last night. And uh, I just want to really try it out, see how it works. You know, a lot of art is experimenting. You know, when you're painting, you're experimenting as well as problem solving. And it's often said that painting is problem solving, but that's not enough. It's more than that. You're also exploring ways of communicating. You're exploring the ways in which these various uh, chemicals work together, how to make a two-dimensional object look three-dimensional, how to make a two-dimensional object convey emotion. All of this is very much an experiment. So this is still very wet, and I'll demonstrate that. So I'll bring my finger, and there's a little bit of paint left over on there, but not much. It's very sticky. First layers are kind of like that. I've added a little soft glow to my paint. I'm just loading my brush up just a bit. I don't want too much. But what I want to do is I want to start putting in some of this. I just want to, there we go, bring in a softer color down here. It's still going to maintain some of the other colors. So I want to see how that works with the panel. There we go. Let's see. I want to maintain a certain balance of the original colors used. Add some of the reds here. And mix those into the paint. It looks like the linen of this panel is very, very absorbent. It really absorbed a lot of the color that I placed onto it. It should have stayed a little more wet than this. So I've learned something about these. If I'm gonna use these panels, and this is not a panel I've made myself, I'm very used to my own panels and how I make them. Uh, but it seems to me that they've made these panels a little extra dry little extra dry. I'm not sure if I like that because that I, I rely very heavily. I know people complain all the time that oil paints are, oh, they dry so slow. Why would you use them? I use them because they dry slowly. I want to be able to go back in and make blending an easy task rather than a chore. And right now, my blending has become a bit of a chore because it's just not quite wet enough. Hmm. So what do you do? What do you do? Now, the only thing you can do, really, is to use very small amounts of paint. And now I'm adding just a little bit of the blues and the reds that I had in there. Just an indication of another layer back in here. I'm just going to paint very lightly. I want this idea put in place. I may repaint the whole surface. Now that would also help the problem. If the surface of a canvas or a panel is very dry and absorbs too much oil, then you can always put a surface color on it and reprime the canvas itself. Once it's been reprimed, now the paint can rest on top of your canvas or panel and not have to worry about it being so absorbent that it leaches away all the ability of the paint to blend. It is unfortunate that the big focus in the art manufacturing industry is making things faster. Faster is not always better, especially in the world of art. It leads to many other problems 
than simply, well, my painting isn't done on time. Uh, it can lead to ways of thinking that could be very dangerous for your painting in the future, if your painting has a future. I've seen paintings crack within the first year of their creation because the person who was painting it didn't know and didn't care to know the various things that are required to know when you're making a painting, like how to construct it properly. They use very heavy paint at first, very thick with fatty mediums. And that's not always the right approach. In fact, it never is. Uh, unless you're going to be doing nothing but heavy oils all throughout the painting, then you can go right ahead and have fun with that. Or even use wax-based mediums later on, then you can go right ahead. But they then covered the painting with thin, thin layers. And I don't mean thin like a small amount of paint, that's fine. But they added layers of paint that had thinner in them. We call that lean. The paint was very lean, sitting on top of very fat paint. What happens then is the fat paint underneath, it's not drying. It's not going to dry for weeks, and it won't fully dry for months. Whereas the paint that is thin dries very, very quickly, sometimes within hours, sometimes days. But that leads the paint to start to crack. Now, when you have thin paint down first, like I did with this panel, there's thin paint there. It's been thinned with turpentine. Uh, then that's able to dry. You put your fat paint, which is paint that has medium on it, and that then can sit there and dry as it wishes. And it's not going to be affected by the thin paint underneath. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I just, yeah, it was too thirsty. This, this, this whole thing is just very, very, it's a thirsty canvas. It's a thirsty canvas. You know, fortunately, this is one of those that, you know, I don't really have a plan for them really just testing it out just seeing how it is I'm so used to making my own panels and now I can see why so I guess one of the things I'm gonna have to do is show all of you how to make your own primed canvas panels uh, I like the canvas panels mainly because I like the tooth or the texture it's another word for texture of panels normally a panel that is not canvas primed needs an eggshell like texture and eggshell tooth uh, which is nice and it's nice to paint on but I love the texture of canvas especially linen canvas there's something magical about it it's just it really just it floats my boat you know I, I just really enjoy it and so what I want to do is I want to have the hardness of the panel I want that firm surface to get nice details because it's harder to get good details when a canvas moves. It moves under the weight of the brush itself. And that's not always really what you want. So instead what we want is we want to make a hard surface that has that canvas texture on it. So that's what I would like to do. Um, and I enjoy making my own panels anyway. So you know, it's kind of a, a no-brainer for me. I just really enjoy the panels that I create and I feel much more confident in using them because I know how they were made. I know who made them. If I have a complaint, I know who to go to. Who? <laughs> Me. So, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making these layers, just, just, just these layers. I'm not really following any particular outline. I'm letting the, the edge of it dance because I want to kind of cloud-like. I want it to be reminiscent of clouds. There we go. But I want it to follow a particular flow of curve, flow of line. There we go. Now this one I'm going to bring in and try to blend it in. There we go. Smooth out these parts here. And then from here I'll see where this painting goes. Maybe I'll put something in the mist. Maybe there'll be something else involved. I could paint a planet here, or a face. I could put a landscape in here, or just something from my dreams. Or I could just do layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of cloud like this, and have a really good time with that. And I 
bet you someone will enjoy it. You know, I always enjoy that sort of thing. There we go. Let's get this going here. There we go. Yeah, every now and then my computer complains to me, so I gotta, I gotta put it at peace. It's all right. It's all right. I'm just, just doing this. Oh, this is gonna force me to finger paint. I can tell. I can tell it's gonna force me to, just because of the texture of the canvas. They use a very fine grain linen for this. Um, I suspect it's portrait grade. Portrait grade linen is very, very, very fine in its tooth. Uh, and that's to help with the details that come with doing portrait painting. So whenever you see uh, linen, if you're buying linen for art, you'll notice that there are several grades of it, including portrait grade. And portrait grade is very fine. So it has a very fine tooth to it. So it supports, doesn't make the brush dance around quite so much. There we go. So I suspect this was a portrait style linen. There we go. There. We're just going to bring this in just a bit more. I want to give that sense of depth between layers. I just wish the paint had been a little more wet and I wish that the surface had a little more tooth. It's almost like painting on glass, which I've tried and enjoy on occasion, but it's not my favorite surface. It's a little too slick for my taste. Yeah, see, it's forcing me. Here I am. I'm finger painting, folks. Please, if you, if you do anything like what I'm doing here, where you're using your hand, Please wash your hands right away, and please do not eat or drink anything in your studio. These chemicals are not particularly safe. So there's my warning to you all. There have been too many people, too many artists all over the world who are not careful with their chemicals. And yeah, I know some of them say that they're non-toxic. You don't have to be toxic to be dangerous. That's just the truth. This is paint. It's not candy, it's not food, it's not cake, it's paint. So keep your foods in the kitchen, keep your paint in your studio, and you will live a happier and healthier life in general. So there we go. And truthfully, I, I do love using my fingers. Hey, you know, here's another thing with, with using fingers for oils. If you're going to do this, make sure that before you put your paws on the canvas, that they are clean that you've just washed them. I just washed my hands between projects. And yeah, I know my hands are very, very clean. You don't want a lot of oils on the hand because the oils in your, in your hands, on your skin, are very acidic. And that causes problems for the painting later on down the line. It can make the painting uh, darken. It can actually cause it to crack and crumble because there's all this acidic oil now resting in the paint. But if your hands have just been washed, and please don't wash with anything fancy, just simple soap. You just wanna strip any dirt, any bacteria, and any uh, oils off the hands. You don't, you don't need to, to use all kinds of crazy hand products and stuff like that. You really don't need that. I'm just gonna put a little suggestion of clouds here before I continue on with telling you the dangers of having unclean hands and working with paint. Uh, <laughs> you know. uh, but most people are very unaware of how much their hands can affect a painting. It's one of the reasons why museums do not want you touching the paintings. It has nothing to do with being disrespectful. It has everything to do with your hands will have oils and acids and debris on them even that you may not be aware of. And if you're not aware of it, you don't know you're doing anything wrong, but that painting's gonna die. And, well, let's face it, you really don't want any of Van Gogh's stuff to die anytime soon. Although I suspect his stuff is so thick that it could really, really withstand a lot of punishment. And, and that's one of the things I respect about him is he really did use proper technique if Quite unique technique. He knew the rules of painting construction. 
Well, I'm going to let this rest and dry for a little bit while I figure out how I'm going to move forward with this painting, probably in the next few days. Next week's a very busy one. Unfortunately, it's very busy for things that have nothing to do with the studio. But nonetheless, various, uh, various commitments call to me, and that alarm says that I have to go now. So, hope you've enjoyed this little video. I enjoyed doing it. And have a great day, and Galata Studio says, keep on painting. Thanks a lot for tuning in.